Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. Most jazz guitar solos are made out of eight note lines. So if you're listening to mainstream or hard bop like Joe Pass, Pat Martino, George Benson, then most of the time you'll hear a lot of eight note lines. And if you're playing yourself, the eight note lines can be a little bit boring and a little bit undynamic. And it can be a good idea to check out some other rhythms so that you can just create some variation in your solos and it doesn't get too boring or monotonous. If you want to improve your jazz guitar playing and get better at playing over chord changes, check out some new arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. As you heard in the lick at the beginning of this video, the rhythm that I'm introducing here is a triplet rhythm, but it still has four notes and it's actually really easy to convert your normal eight note lines into lines using this rhythm. So first I'm going to go over how you can actually feel this rhythm and get it into your playing and how you can practice it and get it tight and sit well in the groove. And then I'm going to give you some examples of how you can use it on different places in a 251. And finally, I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can convert your own lines into lines using this rhythm. Let's first just look at how we play this rhythm and how we understand it. So if we take a look at example one, that sounds like this. The way I hear this rhythm is probably closer to the second bar where it's written out as an all triplet rhythm. But since we are relating it to eight note lines and we're using it in eight note lines, I've written it out with the eight notes just to keep it, keep it sort of connected to the lines and the examples that we're going to use it on. To practice these rhythms, I have two different exercises. One is approaching it from the triplet point of view and one is more coming out of the eight notes and eight note triplets point of view. I think you probably need to be able to do both with a metronome without too much trouble if you want to use this in your playing. But um, let's just go over them. So the first one starts with the triplets. The idea in this exercise is quite simple. We start by just establishing the quarter note triplets on top of the 4-4. Four four. So that's the... And then in the end we split the last note into two, so... In the second exercise, I'm starting with two eight notes and an eight note triplet. So we're kind of staying with the eight note flow in the beginning and then just really establishing that so we get. And then once that's there, we take the last eight note and then tie that over to the first eight note of the eight note triplet and then we have this rhythm. In this first example, I'm using the rhythm on a two chord in a 2-5-1 in the key of F major. Uh, all the examples are actually going to be on this 2-5-1 in F major. And what I'm playing on the G minor chord here is that I'm using first uh, first inversion B flat major 7 arpeggio, so like this. And then the same thing with the G minor first inversion. And then with the rhythm that's going to be. And here we you can also see that I'm using also we're picking for the first two notes and then because I'm starting on a downstroke I'm actually sweeping the next two and the same for the G minor and then I uh, attach that to a C7 altered and I resolve that to F major 7. If you want to work on using this type of picking for the rhythm then one way of working on that is to take that type of figure and then move it through the scale uh, on a string set. In that way you're going to be checking out a lot of different versions of arpeggios and you're going to have a lot of material that you can put to use on other chords. That exercise could be something like this. In this next example, I move the triplet idea to the also dominant, so the C7. Uh, I start on the two with just a scale one, so the first part of the line is just starting on A and then basically up to B flat and then down, down the scale. Shifting position down to the C to go uh, down under the D flat and then on the C7 altered, I'm starting on the D flat 
and then I'm playing with the triplet rhythm first a D flat minor major arpeggio, so that's this one, and then I'm chaining that together with a B flat uh, minor seven flat five arpeggio in this way, and then I'm resolving this high A flat to the ninth, so G on F. If you want to work on chaining together arpeggios and using this rhythm, then you can do this exercise. So here I don't really have a set pattern for picking it, so I'm just using also picking all the way, as far as I can tell. And I think it's important that you really have sort of a good uh, visual reference, that you really know that the D minor arpeggio looks like this and then while you're playing that that you're aware that you need to play this B flat afterwards. So for this exercise this first line will work really well for a G minor chord. The second one could be really good for like a D minor or an F major 7 and uh, the same goes for the last one. So really what we have here is first an idea that works well for B flat or G minor and then two ideas that will work well for an F major 7 or a D minor 7 chord in the key of F major. Here I'm using the triplet rhythm on a pentatonic scale idea on the 1 chord, so on the F major 7. Uh, the line starts with a G minor line that skips from G to C on one string. It's kind of coming out of uh, pentatonic scales with 3 notes per string. And then I'm shifting up here and then it's going to be a scale run. Minor triad, and on the C7, I'm starting on the flat 13, so and then it's just really down the scale. And then we get to the F major 7, and on the F major 7, I'm using A minor pentatonic. Uh, so the idea is I'm on this A flat, and I'm just resolving that up to the A, and then I'm playing essentially just this chord as an arpeggio but then I'm playing it and then shifting up because the next note in the scale will be this one and then I'm doing the same thing from that note in, in the A minor pentatonic so and then ending on the C so if we separate the idea that I'm using on the F major 7 and turn that into an exercise just in A minor pentatonic then you can of course take that and use that in every place that you can use a minor pentatonic scale, which I've made a lot of videos on that you can use in really a lot of different places. That exercise sounds like this. Again, I don't have a set pattern for when I'm picking this type of exercise, so I'm relying mostly just on also picking. And uh, you will see that a lot of the things that I work with in terms of chordal harmony and using of two voicings and shell voicings and arpeggios, you really get a lot of one note per string uh, type patterns. And uh, to deal with them, you kind of want to work on playing the, all those one note per string things with alternate picking, because that's just the easiest, most flexible way to deal with it. If you can do that, you don't really have to think about it. That's a little bit how I approach it, at least. So um, I have exercises and I have videos on how to work on this, some awesome picking exercises. I'll link to them in the description of this video, and you can check them out, because I know that this is a fairly difficult topic uh, for a lot of people, and it is something that you do need to work on, but it's also very much worthwhile. Just check some bluegrass if you want to see what, what that can lead to. Just to demonstrate how easy it is to implement this to your eight note lines, let's just look at this line. <laughs> So just a regular 251 in uh, in F again and um, B flat major 7 arpeggio, scale 1, E uh, major 7 sharp 5 arpeggio and then a D flat minor triad and then resolving to the 9. So if we apply the rhythm to it then we get this line. Of course when you're doing it like this then I'm just putting it everywhere that I can and that works well as well and you might want to do that once or twice in your solo. When I use it like this then it's of course a bit much because I'm using it four times within the same 251 but it is possible and as you can hear it actually does sound okay and when you want to implement this and when you want to try using it you might not want to use it all the time. 
but you can use it like this and you should experiment with it once you get comfortable playing that rhythm. And it's a nice way to just break up a stream of eight notes and just make something that sounds a little bit different once in a while in, in terms of just the rhythm, not only in terms of what notes you're playing. I think it's important that you do this, especially if you're not familiar with using other rhythmical devices like uh, three note groupings and five note groupings and playing across the bar line. All stuff that I might be doing videos on later because I'm hoping to make this the first in a series and uh, just to go over some different rhythmical and phrasing ideas that you can use to break up your solos and add some other interesting things apart from what notes and what scales and what arpeggios you're playing. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and this is the first time you see one of my videos, then please subscribe to my channel. I publish a new lesson every Thursday and I've been doing this for quite some time, so there's already really a lot of material available on my channel. If you want to download the PDF that goes with this video, then you can follow the link in the description to my website and download that there. This video was made possible by the support that I get from my patrons. I'm very grateful for that small community of people over on my Patreon page that support me and help me keep making these videos. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page, because if you support me on Patreon, then I can give you something in return for your support. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.